Welcome to the newest installment of the Methods in Enzymology webcast series. Today, you'll hear about the new Autophagy three-volume series. When we first heard about the, uh, the area a number of years ago of autophagy, none of us could even pronounce it. And, uh, and there's still lots of people who call it aut autophagy or, <laughs> or something like that. But in any event, it's an area that, that, that has really blossomed in the last uh, 10 years. The result is a three-volume collection of methods, edited by Daniel Kleonsky, professor of life sciences at the University of Michigan, who brought together over 230 authors to contribute to these volumes. We met Don Kleonsky uh, many years ago. He was a postdoc uh, at the Caltech, and um, he is one of these people who is a, a curator type. He wants to bring all of the important stuff together. These volumes have been arranged according to the model system and organism being used, rather than by technique. The chapters are concerned not just with methodology, but also provide the background that allows the reader to appreciate the importance of monitoring autophagy with regard to the particular questions being asked. This 38-chapter volume starts off discussing yeast and ends with insects in the last chapter. The second volume focuses on the analysis of autophagy in connection with microbial pathogenesis and the immune response, as well as autophagy in tissues and intact organisms. It starts off with a chapter on monitoring autophagy in mammalian cultured cells through the dynamics of LC3 and concludes with a chapter on the physiological autophagy in the Syrian hamster hardarian gland. One goal, even of the most basic research on autophagy, is to find information that may ultimately be of therapeutic use. This final volume focuses on disease connections with autophagy and on methods for monitoring autophagy in clinical settings. As in the previous volumes, Certain techniques are presented in more than one chapter, with the emphasis on details that are essential for successful sample preparation and assay using the particular tissue sample being described. It's amazing how he's brought together the best people in this area, and I think anybody who does want to um, move in this direction really needs to get their hands on these volumes because they really represent the state of the art at least for the next few years. These volumes represent the first time that many of these protocols, in particular in multiple organisms, have been brought together in one place. And we thank all of those who have contributed to these volumes. To learn more about these volumes, read sample chapters and view webcasts, visit us online at elsevierdirect.com.